church family. We just got just a few seconds before church starts, and I would ask that um, if you don't mind, I got a phone call from my daughter this morning, and she was crying in a lot of pain. It's hard for a mama to be a couple, well, three hours away and not able to help your daughter when she's in that much pain. So I'm a little heavy-hearted this morning. She is on her way to the emergency room to uh, get help. Um, we think she may have a UTI or something in that form, but um, it's so much pain, and it's really hard, like I said, for me trying to focus and continue. So I'd ask that you would pray for that situation. There are another, There's another special need that I received this morning that my heart's heavy for, and so God knows that need. It is unspoken. So um, I know God's going to do something big here today. And the enemy does not want us to have a breakthrough. But God is going to do something. So as a church body, before we even start, we don't care about the countdown right now. We're just going to pray. And then we'll start in our music and begin to worship God and thank him for what we're praying for. Lord, we come before you this morning, God, with needs, God. Lord, you are the healer. You're the way maker, God. You're the miracle worker. You're the one that we turn to, God. I plead your blood right now. I'm asking you, God, to go where Macy is, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that you, you heal her body, God. I pray you give her a calmness, God, a peace, Lord, knowing that you are in control. God, I pray for this situation, God, that this morning, Lord Jesus, that you would move in that family, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you touch them and heal them, God, emotionally, Lord Jesus, and that you would just walk into the room, into their home, God, and bring peace into their family, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, you are our answer. You are our king, God. And we praise you, Lord God, because we know you're working at this moment, God, and you're moving, and you're healing, and you're doing it, God. And we give you glory for it. We give you honor in Jesus' name. We've come to worship you. We come to give you glory. We're so thankful that we can call on your name. You are awesome, God. We we love you, Jesus. Let's just praise him, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 oh. Shout it out in glorious. Let's make it loud. Make it louder. Jesus, we shout your name.
time this morning in this place. Hallelujah. The Lord is good to us. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to be here in the house of the Lord this morning on this uh, beautiful, windy Sunday. Amen. It's good to see each and every one of you here in this place. Amen. It looks different in here. I haven't, I wasn't able to be in service the last time. And I kind of like it. It looks good. Amen. Amen. We're blessed, ain't we, church? Um, I want to go to the Lord this morning in prayer. I got a prayer request here. So I think it's Sister Claudia, her sister-in-law. Pray for her. Her name's Heather. And then also they have a special unspoken that she wants us to pray for. Um, again, let's continue praying for our country. Uh, you know, to be transparent, last Wednesday, not this Wednesday, but the weekend before, the week before, I was so, I got myself all worked up over this whole election thing. And, Man, and let me tell you, it'll get to you real quick, because, I mean, I see the direction that our country is going, and, you know, and me and Greg, we were sitting by the campfire the other night, we was kind of looking up at the stars, and it's like, man, we're so insignificant. You know, I'm just a, we're just little grains of sand in this humongous creation that God has made, and I'm nothing, I really am, and like, there's no sense in me trying to get all worked up over things because the guy that created all this, I mean, we were looking up, the sky was beautiful. I mean, there were just an abundance of stars, so many. It was just a beautiful evening. You know, and even though we're insignificant and we feel like we don't matter, God cares about each and every one of us. I mean, every, every, every prayer that we lift up to Him, every issue, every... Every concern, you know, he still hears us. Even though when you look out into this chaos and this huge, this huge creation that he has made, the universe, the stars, even here on planet Earth, we're just one soul among seven trillion people. And we seem insignificant. And I guess in reality we are, but spiritually we're not. We serve a great God this morning. And if you have a need, God hears it. Amen. He'll hear it this morning, so all the unspokens, to show them by the lifting of our hands, amen. Please just continue to remember our country, as Pastor preached this past Wednesday, what a wonderful message it was. You know, God is in control, and He knows what He's doing, but amen, we have to make sure we let God know that, you know, that He hears our prayers, and He hears our concerns, and amen, I'm thankful He listens, right? I'm thankful that when we say in the name of Jesus that it's a direct line to him and he understands and he listens to everything that we have to say, amen. We're small and we may be insignificant in this world, but to him we're big, amen, and, and he hears everything that we say. Lord, we love you and we're thankful today to be in your presence, God. Lord, you are a great God and you're a mighty God this morning. Lord, make our voices be magnified in this world, Lord. Lord, magnify our voices in this community, in this town, and in this world, in our country. God, we ask that your will be done, Lord, in our country. In the United States, Lord, we just ask that you move, God. Lord, move upon every need, every request, God, that was raised up to you. Lord, be mighty this morning in this place. Lord, be powerful this morning. God, move upon every need, Lord. We give you the praise and the honor in this place, God. Lord, you are great. You are great, God. And Lord, though we may not seem like it at times, Lord, you hear everything that we have to say. God, you hear every request that we lift up to you. God, you know every concern, God. You hear every sickness, Lord. Lord, you know the deepest parts of us, God. And Lord, we just ask that you move upon this service this morning. Lord, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, can we magnify him in this place? Hallelujah. song 
sing one more time. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. He's worthy of all the praise you can give him this morning. Hallelujah. From your heart, let's holy, worship. Holy sing a new song unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy. Hey! 
imagination this morning. I can see us standing before the King of kings and Lord of lords. As we face him for the first time and we begin to sing holy, 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 holy. I adore you. You are my everything. From our hearts, we're going to sing it one more time. And we want to just give him all the honor he deserves. Holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You are mighty. You was and is. You was. You are. You are coming soon, God. You are coming. With all creation, I sing, I sing praises praise to you. The King of Kings. You are my everything. And I will adore you. Just adore him right now with your worship. Hallelujah. We adore you, God. From our hearts, we give you honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. The Lord is good to us this morning. I'm thankful that he doesn't that he doesn't give up on us. Amen. And in times that even during this time of uncertainty, it seems like he's not there, but I mean he is, amen. And he never fails us or leaves us or forsakes us. You know, I think about, I know this is has not, not really in, in the same thing, but I was thinking about the, the Israelites when they were in prison in Egypt and, and how, man, how they were slaves for, what, 400 years? And I, I guarantee there had to been moments that they were like, what's the point? You know, why do we even keep on trying? Amen. But God was still moving. He was raising up an army. And he knew exactly what he was doing. And amen. I feel that today. I feel like it may not seem like we know that God's around. And we don't understand what's going on and what he has planned. But I do know that God has everything in place. And what God wants to do is going to happen. And you know what? I. You know, this will only go on for so long. We can only keep killing innocent children for so long. And God's going to step in, and God's going to deliver this nation. And, amen, I believe it this morning. Can we just magnify him in this place? Amen. Amen, amen. I don't know, I don't know who needs to hear it this morning, but whatever your situation's in, just know this morning that God has not forgotten you. I don't know who it's for, but God... God hasn't forgotten you this morning, amen, but just know that he is raising up an army, and he's going to move in your situation, amen, amen, amen. Moses wasn't, wasn't ready overnight, amen, it, it took him a while, and like God knows what he's doing, and I wish we knew the plans and the intents of God, but we don't, but amen, that's what faith is, amen. We trust him, and we know that he's able to move. If our ushers will get ready, we'll take up our morning offering and tithes. Amen. I believe God's going to do it. Amen. I believe he's going to show up, and I believe he's going to, he's always going to take up for the church. That's one thing that will never fail is the church. Amen. I'm thankful to be a part of this. Amen. I'm thankful for you guys. I really am. I'm, I'm not the most social person, and my wife gets on to me all the time, and my pastor gets on to me all the time, but not being very social, but amen. I, I care about each and every one of you, and I wouldn't know how my life would be without you guys. I mean, we need each other. We really do. I mean, I don't, just because I don't come over to your house all the time or talk very long sentences to you or say more than three words, I do love and appreciate each and every one of you, and amen. And as a church, man, we need each other. We really do. And this time, I mean, we need a unified army. We need a unified church, and we need unified prayer warriors. We need unified, we need people on the battlefield. And God's calling this church to fight. And, amen, I can't win this on my own. Pastor can't win it by himself. Amen, we need everybody. Amen, I, we do appreciate you. And, man, we have a great church here, great unity. Amen, amen. That's all right. You can give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's say this with me this morning. Upon the authority of your word. I have given, and it shall be given to me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. 
Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God in perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm thankful for that decoration, but you may be seated. But I'm more thankful than anything on the last part where it says, My whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, I'm blessed going out. I think I could say that every day because I want my family saved and walking with God. Just want to give a short introduction to our young people that went to preview. Um, they went to uh, check out the Bible college that Macy is attending, Sister Alyssa has attended, and uh, seeking direction in their life. And I wanted to just kind of give an introduction. Um, we are blessed to have young people in our church. I was cleaning. <laughs> Amen. I was cleaning at my work, and there is, um, there's like the, the clothing section, and then there's a the Christmas section, and then there's the hair, hair uh, salon in the back, and I'm in the middle there, and I'm listening to two ladies talking in the hair salon, and they're both talking about how that they don't have anybody in their church that is younger than 50 years old, and that both churches, two separate churches, only have 50 and above, and one of the ladies that was there, she said, you know, I'm just... I, I think it's sad we don't have young people, but she said, I just really like this atmosphere. I like that it's comfortable and nobody gets out of hand. And she's just talking about how it's so it's so safe and it's so um, comfortable. That was what she's saying. She, did, she said, because young people can get a little bit riled up sometimes. And she said, I just like that small town, small church feeling. And I thought, oh, Jesus, help me keep my mouth shut, Lord. <laughs> help me be quiet. It's none of my business, and I'm just praying, and I'm just vacuuming, and I got to thanking God. Thank you for my children. <laughs> Thank you for these young people, God, that want to live for you. Because <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the world wants them, and the world is pulling at them. And as every, every time we see a young person in the altar, and every time that they go somewhere and they're seeking the will of God in their life, we need to support them 100%. Because the world is trying to pull them out. So, I just want to say real quick before they talk. I asked them on the way there, I said, what do you want more than anything? And every one of them said, I want to find my identity. I'm going to tell you, their identity is in the church. It's not anywhere else. Their identity is with God. And that is what they're finding. They want to know they belong. And church, I thank you for loving them. I thank you for supporting them. So, if you don't mind to give them just a minute. They're going to sing a special song for you when it's over. It's going to be a true blessing, but hear their hearts. Give them your full attention and pray for them that God will give them courage because they are nervous, but that God will give them ability. I remember the first time Brother DJ got up. He did an awesome job, but, you know, he, he, it was hard for him to speak, and he would say that, but God just kept helping him and more and more and giving him more ability. It, it's, it, he's not a young man anymore. He, you know, he's not like these kids, but he understands, and so, some of you, it's been a while, but you are going to understand that it's hard for them. What Brother uh, Jake did the other night, oh, my Lord, it got a hold of my heart. He spoke from his heart, and I know he was scared to death, but, you know, I'm proud of these kids. So you just worship as they give their testimony. I think Brother Daniel is number one. Good morning, church. We recently, as she just said, we went to Urshan Preview, and we went and we saw things of God. Many different students, many different staff members, all believing in the same thing that I and my youth do. I came with a certain expectation that I would receive a new direction, a refreshing of faith, a confirmation, and I also just wanted to see what the college looked like and what it was all about. And uh, once I arrived, I did feel somewhat intimidated initially. I felt as if I couldn't belong with everyone else there. 
But of course, the environment was, was awesome. It was all these people that believed in what I believed. And like I just said, the staff and the students of Version, they seemed just like a big family that were very friendly to me. And to be honest, I think the whole time that, that I was feeling intimidated, it was the enemy trying to, to just dissuade me from going any further than I needed to go. I moved on to my first class. We're actually almost in Hebrew. And uh, it's, it was called Introduction to Pentecostal Theology. And uh, I can actually tell you this right now. And it's like this. Shema, hear. Oh, it, by the way, this is from Deuteronomy 6.4. Shema, which means hear. Israel, which is Israel. Yahweh, and, and by the way, when in the Bible, in the, in the Old Testament, when it says L-O-R-D in capital, that that means, it also means Yahweh. Eloheinu, our God, Yahweh, Lord, Ehad is one. And that, that's Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Next, my class was about the New Testament. More specifically in the New Testament, the Gospels. And uh, this brought me some reassurance that I didn't know, be- that I needed before. And it, both, both of these classes brought a deeper understanding than I ever thought I could get within such a short amount of time, with, within just a preview. The next day, my first class on, on Friday was called Spiritual Formation. And this was a class about prayer and the consistency of it. The, not consist, the consistency of it, yeah. And it helped me to realize my own flaws in my own prayer life. I needed a refreshal there. So one of the things I needed and I hoped for was answered. After this was a class called Leader and Group Performance. This offered me some practical advice about the downfalls of some groups and how they have a fear of conflict, which initially comes from a lack of trust. And then I learned the difference between a detrimental and personal conflict between between that and a progressive conflict. It's the, a, a detrimental conflict, you know, if you go against somebody personally and you don't really have any intention of getting any further along than what you should be, uh, that's what can really tear a group apart. And a progressive conflict is where we can talk to each other with the intent of getting further on, along and in, 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 in progressing where we should be going. Then I had a class about uh, called Revelation, which was about the book Revelation. And then we talked about the part of the book where John is seeing heaven seeing the four beasts, he's seeing the 24 elders, the seven spirits of God presented that as seven fires. And in the Bible, seven represents a, com- a completeness or, or perfection. So that means the whole presence of God filled the room. And God gave me a visual, visual a visualization of what these praises sounded like and what they looked like. And this was... And the, there were incredible praises that went, went on for eternity. However, what really got to me was when God, and he silenced all these incredible praises, all these loud praises that were going on, and he silenced that just so he could hear us here on earth. And then the whole presence of God filled that room. God, that... And during that, I could feel, literally feel the, the presence of God moving over like a wave. Went from one side to the other side, and it was, it was just a heaviness that came across, and I could feel, I could feel God speaking, saying, you know, I, I can silence all of heaven just so I can hear you, just for you. And like Brother Rob was saying, you know, we are so small, and we're so insignificant, but God still cares for us. 
He'll silence all of heaven with all the praises and everything. He'll silence that just so he can hear us. That is amazing. You know, and, and after this, during that class, I felt just a sweeping presence, like I said. I think it's, it's an amazing preview of what, what is to come, and it's amazing. After this was a class called Abnormal Psychology, and this is basically a review of, of mental dysfunct dysfunctions, uh, Ill illnesses, and other sorts of abnormalities. And while this class wasn't necessarily focused on a spiritual or Bible aspect, it was still amazing to me to, even, to see even how the Spirit of God was still moving even in a class that was maybe talking about a secular topic. That's groundbreaking for me because when uh, all, the, all I've ever known in school is to be surrounded by what seems like just, just God's not there. And, and that was amazing, that we can be, still be learning these other topics while God is, His presence is there. And that's amazing. And for, for one, we did not have a, a morning service after that, and it was completely amazing for multiple different reasons. For one, to see that there were, there were many students who believed the same as me and did it all going to the same school was something I thought couldn't get any better. And it was fantastic. There, there was confirmation that if I didn't know the Holy Spirit was there, Holy Spirit was there yet, than I certainly did after that. <laughs> These things included multiple people whom I had never met before, all rebuking a spirit of confusion from my life. I had never seen any of these people. I had never, I had never talked to any of these people. I had no idea who they were, but I was there and I was praying with my, on the, on the seat and I was just praying there. I didn't look up. I didn't know who they were, but there was di multiple people that came by and they, and they all prayed that same re uh, rebuking of the confusion. That to me is amazing because how can, I mean they're not going to con conspire and say the same say the same thing. So it's got to be the Holy Spirit that is that's saying, "Hey, send those people, send those people, talk to him." That was that was amazing. Also, this brought me—I'd never seen these people before, like I said—and this brought me some new direction as as God broke through the smoke and mirrors. There was a break, and then we went to Christian ministry, and of course, overview, which this is more of an informational. It helped to bring some information and. And uh, about the different courses at Urshan, which was nice. And uh, we then viewed the dorms there on, on campus, and it, it was nice also. But the real, the real focus was the night service, where Brother Aaron Batchelor was to speak at. Immediately as I entered uh, the sanctuary, it just felt as if presence of God was heavy all over the room, and I, and I could I could feel that God was about to do something special, and he was ready to work. But the bachelor said some things from the service that brought some light onto confusion from before. It was Israel that demanded a king from Samuel. They were looking at all other nations with the kings that ruled them. They seemed to have it all together at least from Israel's point of view. Israel was frustrated with Samuel. This can be in, applied in the same way today as churches, uh, with all churches. And we've especially been seeing it in 2020 with all the chaos that has been thrown our way. And it's shaking everybody. Frustration with a higher authority is the first step to backsliding. This causes our eyes to wander where they shouldn't be looking. We start to wonder, why can't we have those things that the others have? We even start to want those things instead of what God has already given us. And we forget about the importance of what God's given us. And after this message was spoken, I fell to my face. And for the first time, I felt a full conversation with God. It felt as if God and I were just in a room together simply talking and conversing with one another 
without any sort of distractions. There was nobody else but me and God. And, of course, before, I could talk to God with with little snippets and little bits and things things here and there, but God had made a way to break through all the confusion. And He made a way to talk to me directly and make it clear. Things won't be the same for me again after this. So with all the expectations I had, it felt as if God had provided all that I needed, and then some. God has brought me a new direction, a refreshing of faith, a confirmation that I wasn't sure of before. And I can tell you from all this that God is real and He is amazing. preview, I was going through a season that I like to call crisis. And honestly, I didn't want to go to preview. I didn't feel like I deserved to be there. I felt kind of helpless. I was so spiritually and mentally empty. I knew that it could be fixed, but I didn't feel worthy of fixing. I was exhausted. Um, And I was that way for a while. Um, Because I've spent a lot of my life trying to be perfect, I guess the perfect daughter, the perfect friend, all of these things that I've never really considered them. Um, I really want people to like me, and it bothers me when they don't. <laughs> but when I walked into Urshan, I felt so inferior to everyone else. I felt anything but perfect. That entire first day, I felt that way. I mean, I love the environment there. And I was surrounded by these amazing people of God. But I was also surrounded by my insecurities. And I could not let loose, although I wanted to really bad. Um, But it was like I could feel the chains that were holding me. I could feel everything that was holding me back, but I couldn't let it go. Then came day two. (laughs) And... Honestly, I don't really know the moment in time where like, I felt like I changed. But it was like I woke up and the change started to happen. Every single class was amazing. Every single class I felt like they were talking to me. And then in our morning service, their, um, the first person who was preaching was like a um, Christian student. It was like a like sermon that things and he talked about who are you and I don't exactly remember most of the words but I just remember being so just tired of feeling the way that I have felt and then the um, next preacher he talked about who are you in God's eyes type thing and they both had no idea what the other was preaching, but yet it was so similar, which I thought was pretty awesome. <laughs> and um, he started talking about how leave what the world has in the, with the world, but be with God. And I began to realize that I was not made to be perfect, that these insecurities were never of God. And then in my human services class, um, they talked about how um, God would have never died on the cross if he expected me to be perfect. And at the end of the day, I felt this feeling of nothing, this feeling of nothingness just went away. I felt like this whole not belonging went away. At the end of the day, I felt like I was home. (laughs) I've always loved God. But 
now I feel like it is a type of love. It is a more intimate type of love, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, like he's my friend now. <laughs> I thought that um, he was always that, but it was like the friendship where you do all the talking and the other person just kind of has to listen and you just don't take their advice ever. <laughs> but now that I listen, my friend has taught me that I have to stop picking apart the masterpiece that he has created to rest in the fact that my imperfection is okay. Preview was amazing, and I can't wait until next year when I become a student and I get to be at my new home. <laughs> Thank you.
because if this is really the will of the Lord, he does not want that to happen. The enemy does not want me to follow the will of the Lord. And I didn't feel that the second day because the Lord showed me, don't listen to him, listen to me. Follow my will and you will be fine. And I've heard the saying, do something for the Lord you have never done before and he will do the same for you. And so I did. I praised him after I ran out of all of my energy, after I felt like falling to the ground because I was so tired both spiritually and physically. I kept praising him. I kept worshiping, dancing, whatever it was, whatever I felt led to do, whatever he led me to do, because I was worshiping the Lord. I was glorifying his name and his kingdom. So I did it. Even, it doesn't matter how tired I got. So I got so tired, I felt like I couldn't do this anymore. Like I wasn't getting anything out of it anymore. And he replenished my strength. So I kept going. And it was, I, I didn't stop until the night was over kind of regret that now. I'm extremely sore. But it's fine because it's, it was such an amazing feeling being in his presence. It was during the morning service, it was spoken to me by a man and it was, con it was confirmed by God what he said. I'm going to be the leader of a church. I'm going to lead a church one day. It was, <laughs> it was confirmed by God when he said that. I felt his presence come over me and his anointing follow me. I'm going to lead a church one day. And I will see my family saved. That was given to me the evening service. I will see my family saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, worshiping the Lord on Sundays right beside me. Whatever, whatever the Lord's will is, I will follow. Whatever he calls me to do, I will follow. If this is the school for me, I'm going to follow his will. Whatever career he calls me to do, I'm going to follow because there's no better thing than following his will. His will is perfect. He, he's never wrong. His will is perfect. I got way more out of this preview than I expected to. I, I can't even explain how much I gained from this. It was, it was just an amazing experience, and I, I just got to follow the Lord's will. there 
and I was just waiting for that moment where I could let go of my insecurities, like everyone else said, <laughs> and just feel free to walk along like everyone else and feel comfortable. But the first day, I didn't really feel like that. I was still waiting for that moment. I was waiting for a direction from God to show me what He wanted me to do, because I was still figuring out what I'm doing, what my calling is. But as the next day went on, I went to my classes as normal, and I've never seen a Bible verse on a PowerPoint before in my entire life. <laughs> it blew me away, of course. And while I was there, I was just like, wow, this is really cool. And then we prayed after class, and I was like, never in a million years would I have ever thought that we'd be praying after a class. But I really enjoyed it. And I know that I was still figuring out what classes I'd take, if I actually belong there, and all that stuff. And at the end of it, like, at that middle part where we got to the Q&A, and, like, right above that part where we got there, I remember we had, like, a little miniature service. I think that's what it was. But they were teaching to us, and then they were playing music, and they played, like, awesome music. It was really good. But as we were worshiping and praying, I felt chills go down my spine. Like, you could just feel the presence of God there. And I was constantly feeling cold the entire time. And then I realized why. It's because God was there. You could feel him everywhere. <laughs> uh, I remember praying to him and asking, what do you want for me? What is my purpose? What is my calling? And he I could feel him answer me and say, I'm there. I have always been here. Just follow my will and you will find out and see. And I just bawled my eyes out. And of course, it was awful that I was crying because I had my mask on. <laughs> and my tears stained my mask to the bottom and it was awful. I looked like a mess at the end of it. <laughs> but... <laughs> It was a great service. I felt like God was really there for me. But, of course, I was still, like, wondering, what am I waiting for? What am I looking for? And we got to the hotel, got ready, and went to our next class because it was our last class of the day. And I had Christian ministry. And while I was there, I was like, is this really the class for me? Is this really what I'm going to major in? Is this really what I want? Is this what God's showing me? Because I really feel like I'm meant to be a pastor's wife. I never thought that would actually happen because I'm really bad at talking in front of a crowd. <laughs> and I was really wondering because, like, as the year went on through this year, I was really questioning that. And I wasn't sure, but it kept showing me that I was meant to be a leader, which I would have never thought either. And I was just blown away as I was in that class. And as it spoke to me, I was like, wow, is this really it? Is this what I'm meant to do? And as I was in there, it just felt so nice. I was like, maybe this is it. This is probably where I belong. So after that class, uh, we had the tours, and we went to go see the dorm rooms and everything. And the dorms were really cool. They're small, but they're cute. <laughs> And uh, we made it to the girls' uh, prayer room, and it was absolutely amazing. I walked in there, and I instantly felt a breeze, and I could feel it travel down my spine, and I got goosebumps, and I was like, you can really feel something in here. And I wanted to be able to go there myself one day and be able to pray in that room and feel God. But... After the tours, we went to the hotel and got ready for that service that night. And that service, um, it was amazing. <laughs> That's all I can say, it was amazing. There was a lot of good songs that were playing. There was even students that, from Urshan that were preaching. And I was just blown away by that as well. And some of them, one of them was in Christian ministry. And I was like, is that going to be me one day? <laughs> is that going to be me up there standing one day preaching to all these previewers one day? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. But 
uh, I remember us having that worship moment and praying. And all these people kept walking up to me and praying for me and reassuring me that God is there for me. He's going to show me where I belong and guide me along my pathway. And that really put me on my board, my game board, and just is help guiding me to where the finish line is. And I just remember praying and worshiping God and thanking him for what he's done for me and how far I've gotten. Because I know there's a lot of lost souls out there, and I want to be able to be there to help them as our church has helped me. <laughs> uh, I felt at home. I felt like I belonged. I felt like I was meant to be there. I was told by God that this is for you. This is where you belong. This is what you've been waiting for. And you are going to see it through with me. And I just started bawling my eyes out because I was like, thank you, Lord. You have always been there. And on my way home with them, I remember them, Sister Wells saying, what did you learn from this trip? Where did this take you? And I got to tell them the same thing. I mean, not entirely the same thing, but somewhat most of it. <laughs> and I got to hear theirs, and it really made me feel like we all felt like we belonged. We were meant to be there. And I thank the Lord every day for what he's done for me. The arm of the Lord is not short. It's very long and it, and it reaches the deepest hell and the deepest place where you never thought God could reach us. Coming to Urshan Preview, going on to the camp, there was an expectancy in my heart. I was wanting something for God. This whole year, all the way back to December, I prophesied the call of God on my life and the Bible says to make your election and your calling sure and I was waiting for the confirmation and that did happen you know, to get there I was unsettled it's like walking this getting there was like walking into somebody's house you don't know and it's just a little unsettled but I go to my first class New Testament and it's, it's a Christian ministry ma uh, major he's a, he's a junior his name is Jarrett came to me and says, how are you? And I told him how it was. I didn't just say I'm okay because I wasn't okay. I, I said I feel unsettled. I feel awkward. I don't feel like I belong. I just, there's something, something, something's in my spirit that needs help. And he said to me, my first three and a half weeks into Urshan College, I've, I felt the same exact way. And he told me that when you are feeling like this, you are coming up on the edge of a breakthrough. The edge of a breakthrough. We go to the IPT class, the Pentecostal theology class, and then God clearly spoke to me and said, this is the place. And the God thing about it was, is that Macy, she was in her spiritual formation class and she was praying for me. God has called me. And Urshan is the place to we then, the next day, we have all those classes they've been talking about, spiritual formation, um, revelation, and the Lord just moved mightily. With all you're getting, get understanding. And if there's one place I would want to go to get my understanding, it would be Urshan College. No. And God moved so mightily. We had strategic planning, and they talked about how you need to be intentional with what you do. And when you're not intentional with your prayer life and with your study life and with your own ministry, you drift drift. Be intentional with everything that you do. It's not emotion. It's what we know. We walk by faith and not by sight. Um, I feel the presence of God. Um, we get to the chapel service, the first chapel service, kind of a noon service, late morning. And we get there and 
clarity. If I could describe one word to describe the presence of God and, and that, that weekend would be clarity and, and edification. The voice of God was so clear and it spoke so directly that if, if you didn't have direction on your life before, you would have direction now. And I was praying and seeking after God. Um, see, everybody who prayed for me, I never met them. I didn't see them because my eyes were Today is the day where we need to get at the king's gate and we need to get hungry. The day of revival is now. It wasn't just 10 years ago, but revival is now. We don't have to wait 10 years to enter into revival. We can enter into it now. We can witness now. We can reach people now. Today is the day of revival and we ought to believe it. We ought to preach it. We ought to sing about it. Revival is now.
Jesus' name, we are your dwelling place, so have your way.
can you still hear me? How many are thankful for a God that among the millions, uh, he still hears your prayers? Uh, he knows exactly what you're needing. Uh, he goes on and says, hear me asking, where do I belong? Is there a vision uh, that I can call my own? Show me I'm looking for a reason, roaming through the night to find my place in this world. I'm, I'm thankful this morning that our that our young people, amen, from the from our from our children in Sunday school to our students in our youth ministry, that they are able to start finding their place in this world. Amen. That God has, I believe, a purpose and a plan for each of their lives. Aren't you thankful for that today? God is so good. Come on, let's give the Lord a great hand clap of praise. We appreciate our young people. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe they've got a spirit of a preaching spirits on them. They were given two to three minutes apiece. But a preaching spirit got a hold of them. <laughs> Amen. I appreciate them so much and thankful for what God is doing in their lives. And uh, amen. I, uh, I, I, I did not go. Uh, I, I, I planned, but, but there's a thing called deer season. And uh, the Lord, he, he showed me real good. Uh, I've hunted and hunted and I may have seen a few, but last yesterday I, there were so many deer. They were everywhere, and I unloaded my gun maybe twice, and not one deer fell. I'm saying it's got to be a gun problem. It can't be a shooter problem, but nevertheless, um, I, I'm so glad they had a wonderful time. Amen. I, I want to this morning, and I am I am very well aware of the time, and you're gonna you're gonna see some uh, miracles do happen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Because I want to this morning, I'm going to invite all of you to come with me, and we're going to sit down, and I hope I don't embarrass them, but we're going to sit down with Benny and Wanda Wells today, all right? Y'all come along with us. See, they're going to get baptized here in a few moments in the wonderful name of Jesus. And so what we're, what, so I've, I've invited all of my friends to come with me, and I, I'm going to have just a really short discussion with them, and y'all are invited to come with me, amen, because... As, as I listen to these young people and their futures ahead of them, and they're, they're trying to find some direction, they're trying to find their place in this world, and it's so wonderful, really, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But many of us that are no longer young people, all right, we've, we've went down a road, and some of us have went down roads that we shouldn't have went. And there are those here today that, that your life has, has gained a lot of baggage, things that you really would like to get rid of and some things that, that, that you're wondering if God could ever be able to help you. Wanda, I don't want to embarrass you, but she told me the other day when I, when I talked to them Monday night, and, and she felt, she said something that we've all felt and many of us have said ourselves. She just thought, I just didn't think I would ever be good enough that God could save. None of us are. We'll never be good enough. None of us are deserving of this. But she also made a statement that, 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 again, I have felt myself. She said, these last few weeks, God has brought them here, and, and, and they're, they're so thankful for their church family. But I just keep wondering when it's all going to fall apart. <laughs> Let me tell you, God, when we, when we become a part of his family, not saying it's going to be perfect living, that everything's going to go smoothly, but I'm going to tell you, you talk about stability. God puts in stability. God, God enables and helps us. And so if you'll, if you'll just share with me for just a few moments, uh, amen, we're going to, I want to have a conversation because God is, has already touched their lives, but I believe God is going to turn their lives completely around. Can we thank the Lord for that here today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. I want to go to Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Paul's writing, he says, If there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, having unity. Let, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man unto his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And, and here's where he's getting the point. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I need, how many here need some help in your mind? <laughs> 
That's where the battleground, that's where you that's where you wage war every single day. And before you found God, or before God found you, amen, that, that was a that was a very difficult place to be. But even after you find God, guess what? The battle still rages within our minds. But let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name. Amen. That at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow of things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. And that every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the God of God the Father. Amen. I'm thankful today that, that Paul is saying... You can have the same mind that Jesus Christ had, and that mind that he had is what led him to a cross. Now you say, I'm not real wild about the cross, but I'm going to tell you, amen, it's a whole lot better option, than, amen, than keeping the old mind that we used to have. Amen. Lord, we love you this morning. We're thankful, God, for your presence. We're thankful for your word. And I pray today, God, as you will help each of us, God, to touch our minds, our understanding. Help us, Lord, to to see it from your perspective today. We're thankful, God, for your goodness this morning, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody said in Jesus' name. Praise God. You can be seated for a moment. Amen. Praise God. When, when Paul said you can have, but, but, but this let this mind be in you. The word mind there, it, it, of course, it means thinking, it, it means understanding, but, but it, that, that particular word in the original language, it also means, the definition's a little, it kind of threw me off a little bit. I, I could get the oh, thinking and understanding, but it also means senselessness and, and recklessness. And I thought about, well, wait, wait, wait a second, that, that's not what I would have in mind when it, when it comes to the mind of God. But, but when you consider what the context of this set of scriptures is discussing, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So one translation says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. He at any time, he could have pulled out that God card, if you will. Amen. He could have had a legion of angels come and minister to him, but yet he remained, amen, in the role in which he had to fulfill. And that was, he had to become our redemption. Amen. That The battle really was won. For, it was in the garden when Jesus prayed that prayer, not my will but thy will be done. He had to surrender the flesh unto the authority of God. Amen. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being when he appeared in human form. And he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death of on a cross. That's the kind of mind that Paul is saying, that you would have a, be a mind of which was thinking and understanding, but when it comes to the human perspective and the logical outlook would be that that's kind of senseless and that's pretty reckless because really when you're living for God, amen, you're not, it's not about control, it is about complete surrender to Him. Amen. When you're 18 years old and your life's ahead of you and you're trying to find direction, let me give you the best advice uh, I could possibly give uh, is you let go of everything and you follow after what God wants uh, because what God wants uh, may not always line up with logic. But the kind of mind that, that Paul says that we need to have in us uh, is the same mind that Jesus Christ had uh, that he followed that which again uh, logically didn't make sense. He didn't have to die on the cross. He could have chose differently, but he surrendered to the cross. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. Amen. Your mind. Everybody say the mind. 
1 Corinthians 1 and 18 says, For the preaching of the cross is to them of that perish. It's foolishness. Amen. This is a bunch of foolishness, they say. Amen. But unto us which are saved. The Bible says it is the power of God. This ain't foolish to me, but this is my lifeline. Amen. Where those in the world today may say, oh, that, that's, that's a bunch of crazy. Well, it may be crazy to you, but to me, it's everything. Amen. I don't want to live my one day without what this Word of God has to declare because this book is powerful. Amen. The mind the very mind that we have, it, 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 it's, it's powerful. God, God created us in a very amazing manner. Uh, amen. Uh, praise God. I, I've shared this once before, uh, but, but it talks about when a squirrel is born. Uh, nobody, when a squirrel is born, nobody has to fend for it. Once it's born, it runs up and down trees. Right away, it finds its own food source. Uh, but you have a little human uh, baby that is born. Uh, amen. Uh, on the other hand, that baby, uh, amen, will die if you don't look out after him or her. Uh, the squirrel operates by instinct, uh, amen, which is perfect. Uh, it knows exactly when to do it, where to do it at. Uh, it has all that knowledge within itself. Uh, the squirrel is completely at home uh, in its environment uh, where you and I, when we are first born, uh, we are completely disoriented by our own uh, because even though we have been given this great mental faculty that is able really to create our own environment but oftentimes we don't do it amen here we are human beings with these marvelous minds and we are struggling thinking we are stuck with conditions or circumstances that we're surrounded by I'd like to do it but I can't because and whatever follows the word because is the circumstance Circumstance, and we become subservient to the circumstance itself. The circumstance becomes our version of God, and we don't, or we do what our perception of circumstances dictates. Often, we don't even try to even come up with a better way. Amen. Because we are, we again, we we, we become enclosed. We become captive to the way we think. But I'm thankful this morning that we have a God that knows exactly what to do with our because. Amen. We have a God today, amen, with all the circumstances around us, all the messes we've made, all the mistakes that we've done. Guess what? We've got a God today that is able to turn everything around and make it for hope and for purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's amazing what, what, what a mind is able to accomplish uh, for many years uh, the world was thought to have been flat but but Columbus uh, amen he dreamed of an unknown world amen he staked his life on the existence uh, of such a world and guess what he did he finally discovered uh, that unknown world uh, the guy by the name of Copernicus uh, he was a great astronomer but he dreamed uh, of a multiplicity of worlds uh, he had no way of really seeing them uh, but yet that's what he thought uh, that's what he believed uh, amen and eventually he revealed them uh, Henry Ford a very poor and uneducated uh, he dreamed of a horseless carriage. He went to work with what tools he possessed and without waiting for opportunity to favor him. And now evidence of what his dream was is all in our parking lots here this morning. Thomas Edison dreamed of a lamp that could be operated by electricity. Began where he stood to put his dream into action. And despite the more than thousands and thousands of failures, he stood by that dream until it became a reality. The greatest achievement was at first, and for a point of time, it was just a dream. That's why when we are born again, amen, we are, we, our spirit is redeemed and our mind is renewed. Your mind is a powerful thing within itself, but without God, it will lead you to destruction. Amen. The human mind, it is powerful, but none of us has the ability to imagine or able to create salvation. From the youngest to the oldest, all have sinned. And 
and come short of the glory of God. All of us are in need of a Savior. Aren't you thankful this morning that we live in a time where there is a Savior? Amen. Praise God. Most people, they struggle with the very idea of salvation. How could that happen? Why, why would it happen to me? How could it happen to me? Amen. They are convinced that no, no God, no matter how big He is, that He would not be able to save them. He may be able to save others, but He could not save me. 1 Corinthians 1 and 21, For after that in the wisdom of God, the world of wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of, of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks, they seek after wisdom. Wisdom, but we preach Jesus Christ crucified. Amen. Under the Jews, a stumbling block. Under the Greeks, it's foolishness. But under them which are called both Greek, Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. The base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. And the purpose of this is that no flesh would glory in His presence. No one person can take credit for what God has done. It is simply by the mercy and the grace of God that you and I are here today. Amen. This morning, amen, as I've invited all of you to come with me, amen, to talk to Benny and Wanda. It is only by the mercy of God that not just that you two are here, but that all of us are here. Amen. See, God had to reach just as far down to reach, to pick us up out of that horrible pit as he had to reach for you. I'm thankful today we got a God who is full of mercy and he is full of grace David after he sinned the prophet approached him and revealed to him what he had done and David's response was repentance everybody say repentance he repented we read that his prayer of repentance in Psalms 51 verse 7 David writes he said purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Notice he says in verse 9, Hide thy, thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, i got good news for you. It's reality. You mean all those things that I've done, all those things I've participated in, all those things that I am guilty of? Yes. Blot out all mine iniquities. Then verse 10 he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. See, David said to create in me a clean heart. See, your heart is not the, it's not talking about the muscle that's pumping blood through your body. Your heart is your mind. Your heart is the seat of your consciousness. Amen. And, and he says, I, I need it to be cleansed. Amen. See, Jeremiah chapter 17, it tells us in verse 9 that the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Amen. That's how you're, that's what sin did. That's, that's the curse of sin. Amen. Your heart is deceitful and it is wicked. Who can know it? Well, the Bible tells us that the Lord searches the heart. He said, I tried the reins, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. See, my heart is most wicked. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus can make it clean. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of of Jesus. There is no other remedy, amen, for blotting out of your sins than the blood of Jesus. 
Amen. That's why the, Jesus had to have that certain mind. Because if he hadn't had that certain mind, if he'd only came to this earth and done all these wonderful miracles and, and taught all these great principles, but had he not went to a place called Calvary and hung upon a tree and shed his blood, amen, there would be no redemption. But that's why his mind, amen, that he made himself, humbled himself as a servant. Amen. David asked for God, create in me a clean heart. See, anybody got an old, an old clunker of a car? Amen. And, uh, you know, you, you, you like it because it's paid for, but, but it's always breaking down. And so you take it to the garage and, and you're always asking them, well, see what you can do, but, but please don't, don't let it cost me too much. <laughs> So they just kind of piece it together and, you know, keep it trying to go along. Let me tell you, God does not take the heart that is so wicked, uh, that is so deceitful. Uh, he don't just go in there and, and, and kind of repair it or, or remind. No, he creates a new one. He, th see, there's no usable parts in that old heart. There's nothing that can be re re refashioned or reused. It's got to be brand new. That's why David said, create in me a clean heart because you can't take something that is not clean and make it clean. It, it, it'll, it'll remain unclean. That's why he creates a new heart. Amen. Praise God. My spirit, my, 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 my soul, Amen. My, my, my spirit uh, was created by God. Amen. And so David asked uh, uh, that, that he would renew my spirit. See, you are a trichotomy. Your, your mind, body, and spirit. Your mind is your soul. Amen. Your spirit is what is eternal. Amen. And he renews your spirit. The word create, <coughs> uh, create me a clean heart, the word create means to cut down. Again, it, it cannot be reused. It's got to be completely redone, remade. Amen. And to be renewed is to have something to be rebuilt. Amen. I'm thankful today that this morning you and I, we can stand here today, amen, knowing that God, amen, is the one that is, if, if it was up to me, if I was the one having to recreate or I was the one having to renew, we would be so limited. But the reality is it is God, Amen. That creates in us the clean heart. It is God that renews within us His Spirit, our spirit. Amen. So, this morning, the good news that we have here today is that God can take that old, ugly, sin-soaked, black, deceitful, amen, wretched heart, and He can make it completely new. Amen. And he can take that old spirit, amen, that is so tarnished, amen, it's got a lot of miles on it, amen, he can completely renew it. How does he do that? Well, first of all, we repent. Everybody say repentance. <laughs> repentance is that dying out to ourselves. It is that saying, Lord, I'm no longer running I, I, I'm no longer blaming everybody else, but God, I'm taking responsibility. I have been a sinner. I have made mistakes. I have done all those things. And Lord, today, I, I'm acknowledging that, and I am asking you, God, would you forgive me? I'm repenting of my sins. I'm stopping the direction that I'm going, and I'm making a direct turn, and I'm going the other direction. I, I got to make that decision. Nobody can do it for me. Nobody can make me do this. That's why the Bible says godly sorrow leadeth to repentance. Uh, amen. It leads us to that place uh, where we say, God, I'm tired of fighting it. Uh, I'm tired of trying to make it happen. Uh, I want to surrender to you. Uh, so it is the dying out to ourselves. Uh, it's the crucifying of our flesh. Uh, in the old tabernacle in the wilderness, uh, that's that first place you would come to would be the altar. Uh, that's where the sacrifice was killed. That's where the blood was shed. The second thing that you need to do. Anybody want a new heart? Anybody want to be renewed? Well, if you've not been baptized, this is what I, I had a conversation with him Monday night. I said, let me, let me explain to you what baptism is. It is not a public display of our faith. 
It's not, amen, the way that you get your name on the church books. <laughs> but baptism, it is that burial. <laughs> When you are buried with him, the Bible says, in baptism. And that is why when we do that, we call over you the name of Jesus. Amen. Now there are many that may say, well, but I was baptized differently. I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Matthew 28, 19, it's in the red letters. Jesus said that. I know exactly what he said. He said, I'm gonna, he said to go out and to baptize them in the name. The name of the Father isn't Father. If I were to write you a check today, it wouldn't be a whole lot, but if I were to, and if I signed my name, Dad, would the bank cash it? No. Or if I, say, if I signed it, Son, or Husband, these are all my titles. Amen. Pastor. But, but the, the way that you're going to be able to get that check cashed uh, is because of the name that has authority upon that account. So I've got to sign my name that, that, all, that authorizes uh, that amount to, to be given to you. That's why when we are baptized in Jesus' name, we want the name of Jesus called over us because His name is the name of full authority. Amen. That's why Peter and John... They, they got thrown in jail because they, they, they prayed for a man. Uh, Silver and gold have I none, Peter said, but, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. Well, he was healed. They wanted to know why, how did he get healed. Well, they said, well, it was the name of Jesus. They didn't like that answer. Matter of fact, they even told him, we don't mind you preaching. Just no longer preach about that name. Don't preach in that name. Peter said, what other name can we use? Because there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That's why the name of Jesus. So when you are baptized, you are bare, you're taking that old man that you crucified at the altar and you're burying him in a watery grave. When you bury a body, there's no longer a connection to that body. You're entering into covenant with God. Amen. It was where in the, in the tabernacle, it was where the priest would go after the altar and he would, he would wash, he would get cleansed, and he would do it by full immersion. Amen. It wasn't sprinkling, they weren't spraying water on him, but he was immersing himself in the water. And then, amen, praise God. What's the next step? Well, Jesus was crucified on a Friday afternoon. He was buried that, that same evening. Amen. But he rose from the dead. It's called resurrection. Amen. Praise God. Holy Ghost in filling. When you would get to the Holy of Holies in the old tabernacle, that's where the Shekinah glory would reside. I'm telling you this morning, God is not going to leave you where he found you. When you repent of your sins and you're baptized in his name, the promise is that you shall, you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Those that were there and they, they heard Peter preach, they asked a very direct question. You're not going to find this direct of a question almost anywhere else in the scripture. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Give us instruction. And then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you what remission means? When you look that word up, the very first word it gives is freedom. How many need freedom today? That's, that's a pretty good freedom. But it's not just freedom, you're pardoned. What, what, is, what is a pardon mean? Well, if you're a criminal and you're guilty of what you've been accused of and, and you've already been sentenced, whatever sentence it is, but if you receive a pardon, that means you get to walk out of your prison cell, but not just walk out as a free person, but you're, you never have to go back there because you're no, there's no longer a record. You don't have a felony. You don't have anything on your... It's been wiped completely clean. Deliverance. It also means to send forth. 
to lay aside, amen, to leave. See, when you're baptized in Jesus' name, amen, when we baptize you and we call the name of Jesus over you, that old man stays in the water, so to speak. And that's when you rise up walking in newness of life. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, we're going to close right here. We're, gonna, we're landing. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Everybody believe that word? Now let me ask you this. Amen. When you were baptized in Jesus' name, did, did were you old when you got baptized in Jesus' name? Maybe you were. Let's say you were. Let's say, let's say you were old. Let's say you had a, an achy back or a knees that didn't want to bend real well. Maybe even had some wrinkles. All right. When you were baptized in Jesus' name and you were born again, the Bible says all things become new. What happened to you? I still had wrinkles. I still had achy joints. Well, the Bible's not talking about necessarily your body. Let me tell you what, where it is focusing on. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Those, those areas in your life that nobody can access, God reaches in and he cleanses. He changes. Amen. Those, those old, I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen people baptized in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, they, 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 they rise out of that water a completely new. That's why it's more than, it's not just a formality, it's not just a, a, a public service we do, but you are entering into covenant. The blood of Jesus is being applied to your life. How many are thankful for the promise of God here today? Amen. As we stand here this evening, <clears throat> praise God. Amen. We're going to baptize Benny and Wanda here in just a moment. Amen. Matter of fact, if they want to go ahead and, amen, get ready, get prepared, praise God. Amen baptized in Jesus name can you show them amen hallelujah we're excited for what God is going to what he's done for what he's going to continue to do in their life how many are thankful amen that this journey with God it, 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 it may be a thousand mile journey but it begins with that first step and I've told them from the very beginning I've said just worry about the very next step don't don't get too far ahead of of God just allow because the Bible says that his word it's a lamp to our feet it's a light to our path Amen. And the Bible, the Bible declares that, and that is so true. But God promises to, to give us enough light for the next step. Aren't you grateful for that here today? Amen. We're going to sing. They're going to get ready. We're going to baptize them in Jesus' name here in just a moment. Why don't we thank the Lord here this morning? Come on, church. Let's magnify the name of the Lord. Thank God for the new mind in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship Him.
Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Isn't God awesome? Let's pray right now. God, we thank you, Lord, for Benny. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in his life. And, Lord God, as we baptize him in a moment in your wonderful name, God, as he enters covenant with you, God, we ask, Lord, as you will continue to direct his, his path, order his steps. We thank you today, God. We're believing for complete healing and, Lord, deliverance in Jesus' name today. Praise God. Amen. Benny, because you repented of your sins, it is now my honor that by the authority of the word of God to baptize you in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins in Jesus' name. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. In the name of the Lord. That's it. Just. Praise God. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today, God, for Wanda. We're thankful for God, what you're doing in her life. Uh, God, her family. Uh, Lord God, Lord, everything, Lord, you're going to wash it away. We thank you for your word. God, it's authority. Uh, and Lord God, we believe in your power. Uh, in the wonderful name of Jesus today. Uh, thank you, Jesus. All right, Wanda because you've repented of your sins. And now, again, it is my honor uh, by the authority of the word of God to baptize you in Jesus' name for the remission of those yes. sins. In Jesus' name. <laughs> yes! yes! Woo! Glory! <laughs> You are an alcoholic. You are this. You are that. You know, you turn and say, I am a child of God. I know where I belong. I am chosen, not forsaken. And as we rejoice and greet one another in the end, let's just sing that one last time as you head out to your homes and the Lord be with you. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God, yes I am, I am chosen, I am chosen, not forsaken, I am who you say I am, you are for me, not against me, I am who you say I am, I'm chosen, I am chosen. 
Mayor's announcement. Amen. All right. Tonight, uh, 5 o'clock, our um, foundation class. Amen. Tomorrow night, prayer meeting. Next Sunday night, we're having our uh, singspiration. If you like to sing, we would love to hear you. Seriously, we would really love to hear you. Amen. Get with Sister Wells or Sister Halls concerning that. Amen. Praise God. We love you. We appreciate you. Here, here's an interesting thing. Wanda, about 30 years ago, my dad baptized her in the Nazarene Church. And here she is here where I got to baptize my dad in Jesus' name. Now I got to baptize her in Jesus' name. Isn't God awesome? He will finish what he started. I just want to give an update on Macy because most of you probably are wondering. Um, they did find out that she does have a kidney infection. They're doing a CT scan, giving her fluids. So they she's, she's going to get the help she needs, but um, they just want to make sure it's not septics or something like that. I don't know that word. They're, they're concerned about that, so let's please pray that um, that, that is not the case because that could be pretty dangerous. Um, I thank you all for praying. I just wanted to give you the update that I had. I love you all. Well, we love you. We thank you today for your blessings. God, we plead your blood to cover every home and family. God, pray you bless us and keep us. We give you honor today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. You're dismissing the wonderful name of the Lord.